thank you. Thank you all for being, uh, for being here. Um, uh, it's another big day for the Raptors. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, not only uh, apologize uh, to DeMar DeRozan for um, maybe a, a gap of uh, miscommunication, uh, but uh, also to uh, acknowledge him and what he's done here um, with, the, uh, with the Raptors for this city, uh, for this country. There's no, there's no measure uh, to, uh, to what this kid has done. And um, we appreciate him. And I promise you that we're going to celebrate him in the best possible way uh, that we can uh, as long as I'm here. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the tough things in this business because um, we, are, um, well, we want to win. Uh, and I have to do everything in this organization uh, to get us uh, to a championship level. Uh, but um, there's also the human side uh, of this business. And um, that's, the, that's the part I, I really struggle with the most. And that's, that's what's most difficult. Uh, there's excitement, uh, but um, a lot of excitement, but there's, uh, there's also, um, uh, I'm a loyal person, I know I'm a loyal person, and um, you build relationships in this business uh, over the years, and you have relationships with players and people, and uh, this, this doesn't, the human part doesn't, doesn't make it uh, easy at all, and um, but I understand sports, and sports is about winning, and uh, I, have, I, I have a mandate to win, uh, and that's what I want to do, is to win, uh, to win a championship, put Toronto Raptors uh, in a position to win, but uh, I, I really do acknowledge there's no measurement for what uh, DeMar DeRozan uh, has done for this organization. Um, uh, and, also, Jakob uh, Pertl, um, we drafted him, and there's a closeness to, uh, to kids that you draft. Um, you have um, certain relationships, and um, those guys will be missed. And um, I do acknowledge everything that uh, they've done. Yeah, um, that being said, um, it's uh, on to another chapter with, with, uh, with the Raptors, and uh, we're excited to welcome uh, Kawhi Leonard and and Danny Green to our fold. Um, uh, hopefully, um, uh, on paper, we feel we have a team that uh, can compete in the East and uh, maybe hopefully compete, um, uh, hopefully to uh, compete for a championship in this league. And that's, that's all we, um, that's, that's why we play. That's why we play sports is to win and, and to, to compete for a championship. So. Um, we're, ex we're really excited about this, uh, bringing a, a top five player in the NBA into our fold, and um, hopefully, um, hopefully this can elevate us uh, as much as we want. So, thank you. Um, he's Demar has done so much for this organization, you know, and um, I think. Um, when, when you're in my position, you know, um, you, you always have to be open in what you can do. And um, both of us um, had a conversation, and um, uh, me and Damar know what that conversation was, and um, maybe I should have handled it, um, you know, better. Um, so um, that's, that's what I'm apologizing for. Josh Lewinberg, TSN. Masai, there's a risk, a certain level of risk associated with any trade, but maybe a higher level of risk in a trade like this. Uh, what made you feel that this risk at this time was necessary, and what makes you confident that it'll be worth that risk? Well, we've been doing this for how many years? You know, you can't continue doing the same thing over and over again. And when you get a chance to get um, a, a top five player, which it doesn't come very often. Um, you have to, I think you have to jump on it. And um, uh, we've, I, I think uh, we've given a chance to this team. Um, we've tried to build it as much as we can. Uh, but 
Um, at this point, we, uh, we got to this level where uh, this opportunity came in front of us, and we have to, we have to jump on it. Uh, I, it's a, uh, Doug Smith, the Toronto Star. In your conversation with Kawhi and his representatives, have you got any assurances that he's anxious about playing here in Toronto? Do you feel he has to rehab his reputation in the league? And what do you think about his long-term opportunities with the Raptors? Um, you know, that's my job. And I think that's, that's why I'm in this seat, is to, to try and figure that part out. Uh, I've had conversations with uh, Kawhi, with his agent, with his uncle, um, and everything has gone, gone well. I look forward to meeting with them face to face. And um, it's, that's, that's our responsibility, you know, is to, is to figure it out and to make them as comfortable as possible. And I think um, on his part, I'll hear um, uh, more from uh, what he wants uh, in our team or in the future, and we'll go from there. I, I, I take responsibility for that, and uh, I'm confident. Uh, I, um, I think we have a good game plan, and um, uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. This is uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Has Kawhi passed his physical? And when do you anticipate him being able to play at an NBA level? I can't anticipate that, but I know he'll be doing a physical in the next couple of few days. Uh, not yet, but he'll be here shortly. Messiah Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star. Uh, in terms of what you're trying to build here and what you have built here, when you're, what are you trying to sell to Kawhi Leonard, given that he's a guy who can determine his own future in a year, and the early indications at least is that he doesn't know much about what he's getting into. Um, again, I, I hear you, Bruce, but it's my job. I, um, but I think there's a lot to sell here. Um, our team, um, our culture, our city, our ownership. Um, we have everything here except a championship, in my humble opinion. Um, I don't think we lack anything in this city. We have great fans. Uh, we have a great organization. Um, we have a great following. Um, I think we have a great country. Um, there, is, there is something uh, about this place that reaches out to the whole world. And we're proud of that. And we're going to continue to um, uh, sell that. And hopefully, it's an appeal not only to him, but to more NBA players. Masai, did it? Did anyone from the Raptors organization give DeMar any indication that he would not be traded? And did you tell him he would not be traded? He seemed to feel he had been slighted. Was that the case? Or if so, when was the last time he was told he wouldn't be traded? Um, I had a conversation with DeMar at Summer League. Uh, and I, I, I really want to leave it at, at that. Um, we, we, we spoke. And um, I spoke to him on um, I, I, I think maybe my mistake was talking about um, what we expected going forward uh, from him. Uh, so not necessarily um, talking about uh, trade, but what I expect from him going forward. And I think that's where the gap was. Um, because uh, in my job, I always have to assume that um, we're going forward with the team that I have. And, uh, if there was a miscommunication there, I, I do apologize to Damar and his family and his representation. It's not, uh, it's not what I meant, but um, well, these things come and go, opportunities come and go, and we have to react in my position, and um, I had to react at this time um, with this deal on the table. Masai, uh, uh, you, you touched upon loyalty earlier, and um, a lot of fans online were talking about um, why would we trade our most loyal player for a guy who allegedly has expressed a lack of interest to come play in Canada, who's also going to be a free agent within a year. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard. Yeah, he didn't express a, um, a, a lack of interest to not play in Canada to me. Um, a lot of these things are people, everybody has their own opinion about everything. And um, I know firsthand, I dealt with uh, this kind of a situation in my first job as a rookie, so I know uh, firsthand how these things um, work and how they don't work. And um, 
Uh, I understand with, uh, with Damar, he was unbelievably loyal uh, to us. Uh, I, I've never seen anything like this, and it, it puts, it's honestly like why I would not be doing this, you know, like um, uh, one day, because the human part of this business is, is, is to me, is what it's all about. And um, the, he has no fault. Um, our team is just, uh, is just not at that level, and we keep pounding on the same thing over and over again. I think if we look at ourselves honestly, everybody knows that, even if anybody that, um, uh, that questions, um, we have to do something different, even, even if it wasn't this. You know, we have to figure out something different, and I take uh, responsibility for that. But I haven't gotten that sense from, from Kawhi Leonard or his, or his people, and I'm going to give him that chance uh, when we meet face to face. And earlier this week, there was a Toronto City Councilor who suggested um, maybe we should have a Raptors legend row and include a, a, a statue of a pot, potentially maybe Vince and also DeMar. Is that something you would support here? I'd do anything in my power. I, um, DeMar um, is the greatest player that has played uh, till now uh, for Toronto. I think everybody, uh, everybody knows that at least uh, what he's done, uh, done here. And um, I, I can guarantee you that he will, um, he will be respected for that and he will be acknowledged for that in the biggest way that we possibly can, uh, can do it as long as I'm here. The emotional act of the summer. When you have a really good team and you're moving them to that elite championship level, how tough have these moves been with doing Casey and Demar? Just for you, personally. Um, honestly, it's not about me. You know, like uh, it, it's about them. And and um, I, 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 again, I repeat that the human part of this business is not. Um, is, 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 is what I'm about. The, uh, the other part is, is it's just tough for me. Uh, you build these relationships, you, uh, I'm not here to cry, I'm not here to, um, uh, to I don't want anybody's pity because it's not me. <laughs> um, I still have my job, I'm still standing here. Um, um, but with Casey and uh, Damar, I know what we've gone through, and I know everything we did together. Um, but I also know their loyalty. I know, um, and I know who they are as human beings. Um, at the end of the day, sports, you want to win, yeah? and you want to win a championship. And um, you, you know what? I, I can also, you know, um, I hate to be defensive here, but I can also say, you know, when I came here, I gave them a chance. You know, like I could have done anything I wanted. When I took the job, I could have let the coach go. I could have uh, traded players, but um, we kept giving a chance and giving a chance. And, you know, maybe um, uh, at some point, you know, like we have to do something different, you know, and I I'm actually happy that we did something different on a high, you know, like which gives them a chance, you know, like the Damar is going to a an unbelievable organization. It gave Casey a chance and um, he has a job with an un unbelievable organization. Um, I, I'm hoping that they rode out on a high horse, you know, and, and uh, with great pride of what they've done here. And I, I feel proud of them uh, and what they did. But uh, honestly, on the human side, um, I just got back from Africa two hours ago, and I'm, I'm, I, I can't, I haven't slept. I haven't, it's not for anybody to pity me, but that's the nature of the job. That's the nature of what we do. And um, um, I keep thinking about this, you know, but. The risks is what, what, what puts people above, you know, and um, I'm willing to take risks. My team is willing to take risks. I think I want to acknowledge Bobby uh, and these guys. They've been great on the ground, um, uh, doing a lot of work. Uh, so um, uh, honestly, it's about them. Uh, and and I, I wish them the best and, and success. And um, I hope... I hope that friendship and everything that we built in five years, you know, can continue um, one day further. So I call Kelly Globe and Mail. Uh, you said that you've talked to Kawhi. Can you give us, there's a lot of suggestion that he's resistant to coming to Toronto. Can you give us some sense of these conversations, when they started and what, what you've talked about with him? Uh, I've only talked to him a couple of times. I know Bobby has talked to him too and, and his representation. Um, and I, I didn't get a sense of um, any um, negativity or anything um, uh, different from um, just wanting to know me or know us um, better and looking forward 
uh, to, uh, to meeting and talking uh, face to face. So um, there's, I, I, honestly, I, I, I would tell you if it's a challenge, I'm an open person, I'm up for the challenge, I would tell you uh, that yes, it is a challenge, um, well, uh, but um, it's nothing that I think that uh, we're not put in position uh, to handle. Um, that's, that's again our jobs and um, I want to lift this team, I want to lift this organization, I want to lift this city and this country and um, hopefully he can see who we are and his representation can see who we are and, um, and uh, we'll move on to basketball from there. That Toronto Sun, um, without the medical information and with everything that happened last year, how confident are you that Kawhi is going to get back to 100 percent and Obviously, there's some risk here with everything, but how confident are you that he's going to get back to the player that he was? All I'll say is without, without all this medical uh, drama that there is, we have no chance of talking to a player that, like that. Zero. You have no chance. He would be in San Antonio, and we wouldn't have a chance to get him. This is why we have a chance, and this is the risk that you are taking. Um, we've, uh, we've looked at some of the medical um, like as soon as the deal was done, and the rest will depend on the uh, physical that will be done. Uh, shortly. Side, Ian Harrison, Associated Press. What do you expect from a Raptors team coached by Nick Nurse and starting Kawhi Leonard? And what else might you want to do this summer before training camp to, to beef up that team that you have right now? Um, I just came from Africa, so I'll leave that question to Bobby. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's handling a lot of all the other trades or talks or uh, what's going on, but we're confident with this team. And um, uh, honestly, it's, it's continuous work. Um, we're happy with this team. We still, um, we still have some, a lot of the players that we have and the combination of um, but the players we have were confident. And if any other moves, uh, or deals come uh, our way that make sense for our team to get better, uh, to win a championship, I think um, we have to look at, look at that because um, there's, there is a certain window and we, we, uh, we acknowledge that. Besides Bill Perkins, CHCH, speaking of the team that you have uh, currently in place, have you heard from Kyle Lowry at all since all these moves have been made? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't talked to Kyle. Uh, I'm sure Kyle is, uh, uh, I'm sure this is hard on him. Uh, I, I completely understand. I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to him since, uh, uh, communicated with him since Summer League, but um, I know this is, uh, this is tough, tough for him. And eventually, uh, he's one of his best friends in the world. You know, like they did everything together. It was uh, the dynamic duo of the Toronto Raptors for years. Uh, they carried us and they brought us to where we are. I hope, um, uh, but I hope to talk to him um, um, soon. Masai, we all know that in the NBA, superstars are almost an, an essential piece of any championship team. You've never had a top five player on a roster. What do you think, if this works out, if he's healthy and it, and it works out as a long-term marriage, what does this allow you to do? How does it change the ceiling of this franchise? Uh, it does because we're stepping on stepping in a uh, territory that we uh, we never have, and um, we there's a hurdle that we have to we have to cross now, um, and that's first and foremost is a first face to face meeting with him and uh, and talking and seeing how um, uh, this relationship can grow, um, uh, whether it's temporary or whether it's you know for the future. Um, but um, having that caliber of player tells another story and gives you more opportunity, um, obviously, and um, I'm curious to find out what that is. Masai, uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Just, just for clarity, like at one point, did, did DeMar or his agent, did they, did they ask you about, about them being traded? Just because there were some rumors kicking around, so did it come up in a conversation in any way, and what did you say? Um, you know, after every after every season, you know, like I I meet uh, with with uh, all the agents uh, of the players. Uh, Bobby does, um, and uh, I did meet with the Mars representation. And uh, for me, is to lay out um, what all the options are. Um, and I, I I when I met with um, Aaron at summer league, I think 
maybe my mistake was saying there was nothing imminent at the time. Um, and I, I acknowledge that if it was a mistake or I apologize to them if it was a mistake. But um, at the time, um, we, we were fourth on the, on the ranks of, of, of trying to get anything done and I didn't see um, anywhere the talks were going. And, um, and that's the message I delivered. Um, it's my job uh, to always go to these guys and talk about our team as it is. Um, that's, uh, that's my job every year, and uh, they will acknowledge that I do that with them every year. Hi, uh, Mark Douglas, 680 News. When you plan trades of this level, do you take into account at all fan satisfaction or possible disappointment? Does that measure in at all, or do you just do what has to be done to get the trade? Um, you know, the fans are always on my mind, you know, like, uh, but a lot of, uh, a lot of it too is um, they don't know the, the inner works and how things, um, and I shouldn't say they don't know, but uh, they don't have the information that, that we have. Uh, and that sometimes um, makes it hard. Um, the, the reality is, uh, if we didn't do anything, um, it's, it's hard to satisfy you know, everybody um, in our positions. If we didn't do anything, I think everybody will be pounding on. Uh, you didn't do anything, and it's the same team, so what's the difference? You're going to get, uh, yeah, we're going to play the regular season, and we're going to get <laughs> beat again in the playoffs. That would be the narrative um, going into the season. Uh, so. Um, it's not based on that. I do acknowledge the fans because they've been spectacular for us and, and they've been great. They do have a voice, um, but I have to do my job and um, on what's best for the Toronto Raptors at, at the time. And uh, we feel that this was a risk or, or a deal that we were willing uh, to make and to take. As I would have done, obviously, all your due diligence on this trade long before and got reports. What makes you think Kawhi is the kind of guy and man who would fit into this culture that you're trying to build? What kind of kid is he? Uh, for me, from just looking outside, I'm, I'm anxious to know him some more. But what I can see is a basketball player, you know, um, a no-nonsense basketball player that plays um, uh, on both sides of the floor and produces a championship player. Uh, he's got, he seems to have a quiet demeanor. Um, and all of us human beings are built different, uh, communicate different, and just getting to know him more um, is what uh, we're going to do. But as a basketball player, um, uh, if everything checks out, you know, he's, he's somebody that I think has proven uh, that he's, a, he's the caliber of player that he is, and um, he's, he's proven it with, with, with championships. Thank you, thank you.